Thank you so much, Pastor Jaday. We can all now sit down. But I want to also introduce my one and only wife, Jan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one and only wife. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, it's always been an honor to, to stand and to serve and share the word of God uh, in Jesus' house. I guess it's been five years since I visited Saskatoon. But God is faithful. I want to thank Pastor Jaday for always taking good care of me. Wherever I am, back in the Philippines, in Ontario, he's always uh, asking me how am I, just checking and making sure that I'm still in the work of the Lord. And I thank you, Pastor Jaday. <laughs> Pastor Norma and Pastor Hill are my parents. So if you don't know, they are my parents. And thank you for being with me. So thank you. So I was given the opportunity to share the word of God for a few minutes. And Pastor Jede gave me the theme, Unstoppable Increase. Truly, Pastor Jade said it's hard to be emotional. I thought I don't have a napkin if ever I try. <laughs> I'm thinking of grabbing the whole box of <laughs> facial tissue just in case. But thank you for this. It's floral. It's better. Especially now we're in online era. So people are also looking our clothes, even maybe our facial napkin or tissue, right? So <laughs> this is better. So now, uh, without further ado, let's begin by checking our team for this afternoon. It says, Unstoppable Increase. It's a wonderful team because, especially during nowadays, there are just many uncertainties and many things that is happening in our lives where instead of increase, there are decrease. In other words, Instead of having more, we are having less. Especially in every area of our lives, whether in the spiritual life, whether in the financial life, whether in business, whether in family, whether in every aspect of our lives, the world, just like what our lady said, the world sometimes stops giving its yield. But praise be to God, because we are called from darkness into light, we are not operating anymore according to the world's standard. We are operating on God's word. This is the good thing of being a Christian because we have something in us that the world don't have. We have what we call faith, and faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Let me read the context or the verses. Genesis chapter 26 verses 1 to 2 and then as we go along, I'll just put some things that I believe can, we can learn along the way. There was a famine in the land. When you say famine, definitely when you sow, you cannot reap. That's why it's called famine. Because if you sow, and then you can reap, it's not famine. They called it famine because no matter what you do on the land, it will not produce fruit. So it's good to know and to take note that during this time, there was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. It's also important to note that the Bible says that was uh, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Because one of the things that is happening even to us Christians is we've experienced difficult things from the past. We've heard some difficult and possible stories from our parents or grandparents and we thought it will not happen in our lifetime. Hello? So sometimes, or maybe it happened on their generation but it will not happen in my generation. It's so sad to say, many people and many Christians have this 
this this expectation but it is a negative one it is on their time but not on my time who among us have have imagined that we will experience covid who among us maybe i've heard world war 1 world war 2 but not really thinking about wars that can happen during my lifetime and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. This is important to take note because Isaac, because of the famine, wants to go back to Egypt. It's sad to say, many Christians today, because of the famine or their circumstances, sometimes we, go, we want to go back to Egypt or to the world system. But praise be to God, because He is gracious, He appeared to Isaac. I believe when you are the son and daughter of God, He will not allow you to go to a place or to make a decision without First, saying to you and stopping you and showing His grace to you. Because He is a good God. He is a good Father. If my daughter will wa wants to do something that will make, that is dangerous, as a father, I will have to stop her. I will warn her. So God's warning is God's grace to us. Sometimes God's saying is stop to us is God's love to us. I don't know about you, but maybe there's one people or somebody is in this room that you, instead of receiving a go, you receive a stop from God. But it's still God. It is the grace and love of God in your life. On verse 3, it says, Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. On verse 4, it says, And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So the purpose of God for Isaac is not just during his time, but also throughout the generation. In other words, when God bless you, it's not just for you. When God bless you, it's not just for you. So let us start as far as our team is unstoppable in Christ. Let us start believing that God's will is not just for you, but for other people as well. We have to dream big. We have to widen our vision. Maybe you're just thinking of having a, a house, a car, but who knows, God wants to bless you with a big house and many houses so that you can bless others as well and help others as well. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. On verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Take note. When he experienced the blessing of God, there were enemies. There are people who were envied about the success and the blessing of God in his life. Now, Isaac heard from the Lord and he stayed where he, he is. And then he sowed on the land. And then the Bible says, when he sowed, he reaped on the same year a hundredfold. The Bible specifically says the same year because he wants us, the Bible wants us to understand that Asak reaped on the same year of the famine and reaped on the same year of the famine. Are, are, are we getting it? 
he, he reaped on the same year of the famine. But I want us to understand that unstoppable increase is not a statement where we, cannot just, we can just claim and it will happen to us. We have to understand that the proper context of the story that Isaac heard. It's not about, oh, I have to claim this unstoppable increase without hearing from the Lord. And when Isaac heard, and then he obeyed. Unstoppable increase is the treasure inside the treasure chest. But you cannot have the unstoppable increase without the key on the treasure chest. And the key is hearing and obeying the Lord. Because many Christians today were, we have all of these promises of God without obeying the commandments of God. It doesn't go that way. What I mean is, there are principles of God especially on receiving blessings, where it operates according to our faith. Faith in Him. And faith without works is dead, the Bible says. So Isaac, even though it is famine, he sowed in the land. What can we learn from that? He did what he can do. In other words, we should not be like other people when during the famine we just... Wait till the famine passes. Isaac still did something in spite of the famine. If you are experiencing famine in your life, whether in your family, whether in the business, whether in the ministry, whether in your spiritual life, keep doing what you have, you need to do. Don't wait for the famine to pass. Because the Bible says that our God doesn't depend on the circumstance, on the season, on the fam whether it's famine or not, because He is our way maker. He can make a way even though there's no way. And He wants us to experience His blessing in spite of the famine if we hear from Him and obey Him. So, when I've heard the word, when I read the word hundredfold in Genesis chapter 26, on, on that verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. I can't help but remember what Jesus said on Mark chapter 10. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands. Take note, for my sake and the gospel. So it's not a reason to leave your spouse. Maybe somewhere. Ooh. Right? That's the word for me. No, no, no. That's not about that. For my sake. And as far as the Bible is concerned, as far as God is concerned, we need to be faithful with our spouse. But there are moments, as far as the context is, there are sometimes things where God wants us to do something for His name's sake and the gospel's sake, where even the people that are close to us won't understand. And then Jesus said, Who shall not receive a hundredfold? Same word. I believe that in the Bible, in God, it's not addition. It's not one plus one equals two. From Genesis to the story of Isaac to the promise of Jesus, hundredfold. There are always fold. In other words, it's not just, it, it, it surpasses our, our imagination. It, it's consistent. No eyes had seen, no ears have heard what God had prepared for us who believe in Him. 
houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution. Same thing. When Isaac received the blessing, there are people who were envy, full of envy because of God's blessing to him. So, with those two stories, we can learn that persecution are nothing but just normal when God is blessing you. We cannot expect when God bless us, we won't have any persecution. But it is also one of the signs that God is blessing you. Do you have somebody who is persecuting you right now? Not at home. Maybe it is a sign of God's blessing and you, have, you just have to keep doing what you are doing. Following and obeying God. Now, what can we learn with these two stories? Number one, let us not react according to our circumstances, but live and respond according to the promise of the promise keeper. In every day of our lives, in every decision, let us not react according to our circumstances. Oh, maybe I don't have, oh, maybe it's famine now. The gas prices are, are rising. Maybe my giving will be, depends on the gas prices. Oh, maybe I'm experiencing issues and problems now. I will not attend one Sunday. <laughs> maybe I'm active on serving the ministry and maybe because of the circumstances, I'll excuse myself. But as Christians, and as far as the story, we should not react, but respond according to the promise of the promise keeper. Number two, just give to God whatever you have in your hands. I can't help but remember the story when Jesus Christ is teaching on the Sermon of the Mount and there are thousands of people who's listening and now they are hungry. They need to eat. But they don't have the resources of time and also money. Because his disciples said, Lord, where can we get to money to feed for the people? And one of the disciples says, even though we have the money, we don't have the resources of time to feed the people. But Jesus said, and one of the disciples said, Lord, there is a boy, two fish, five loaves. And Jesus said, give them to me. And he gave thanks to God. He lifted them up. Oh, the, the power of praise and thanksgiving. Sometimes there is a power of multiplication whenever you praise God and thank God of what you have and not what you don't have. Can we give God a praise? It's a thanksgiving. It's happy thanksgiving on Monday, right? It's one of the things that we want to instill and, and, and refresh our spirit. There is power in thanksgiving. It's stop complaining of what you don't have, but start giving thanks to what you have and give thanks to God because the God of increase can multiply what you have and you give to Him. Just give to God whatever you have in your hands. Number three, do whatever you can do in spite of the famine or negative circumstances and impossibility. No matter how impossible, no matter how difficult, no matter how negative, do whatever you can do. 
Uh, I, I still remember the the motto, I guess motto or or vision of Jesus' house, like crawl if you must, walk, run, fly, run, walk, or crawl. That's yeah. There must be a motion. Oh, I cannot do this now, but you can still breathe. You can still move. Oh, I don't have a car, but you can still ride the bus. Oh, I don't have the money, but you can still walk. What I mean is, you can still do something about it. You cannot only do anything about your situation when you start believing and not doing something. Number four, there is multiplication hundredfold. As Christians, we need to be operating of the promise and the word of God according to His word. And His word says, whenever he, we follow His word, for His namesake, for the gospel's sake, there's hundredfold. And I will conclude with this. There will always be an unstoppable increase when we hear and obey the God of increase, Ooh, Lord, because He is unstoppable. Can we all declare this? I'll just count one, two, three so that we are in unison. One, two, three. Uh, can we increase, increase our volume? Okay. okay. Oh, one, declare it with faith. One, two, three. Yeah, Amen. Because he is unstoppable. Because he is unstoppable. When you hear God, when you obey God, you will have the in unstoppable increase because it is a byproduct of your faith to the God of increase who is unstoppable. You can, we cannot just claim the unstoppable increase without hearing and obeying and putting our faith to the God who is unstoppable. We want, we want to... Render a song where we believe it captures the message, the, the, the spirit of the message. There are two things. One is unstoppable God. As we hear the song, you can sing with us. Actually, I won't sing. I can worship, but I cannot sing. <laughs> you know what I mean. Unstoppable God. Unstoppable God. Our God is unstoppable. Our God is unstoppable. And I won't read the whole verse, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, in the following verses, it says, God, when we sow, it depends on how much we sow. Now, it's not about the amount. But it's about how big your heart you put into that amount. Nobody, even maybe Pastor Jude, won't know the amount. But you know if it's your best. If you give because He is the best. God is the best. And then on verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency, in all things, take note, when we sow, when we follow God, we will be sufficient in all sufficiency. It's not just about money. It's also about your, your, your family health, your, your, your relationship with your spouse, your relationship with your children, your relationship with, with your co-workers and your co-ministers, your the church, in your business, in your in, in 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 education, in whatever aspect of your life, your needs will provide that. 
But on the second part, it says, I love this. In all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Let us start believing that the blessing of God is not just for you. It's not just for you, but for the other people that surrounds you as well. Don't limit the blessing of God in your life because God can bless you with so much blessing so that His glory go on and 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 on that's why he said to Isaac stay there because your blessing is not just for you but also to the succeeding generation God wants to bless you in such a way that your children will be blessed that your family members will be blessed your other church family will be blessed the community will be blessed your co-workers will be blessed your your boss will be blessed the company will be blessed so that they will give praise and glorify the one who gave you that blessing that's the purpose of blessing that's the purpose of blessing Sige. Can we all stand up? Whatever mountains is losing ground hope in you unstoppable God what is that thing they shall be done arrive in Saskatoon yesterday around 6 in the evening but we were in the check-in counter and then the lady said oh the gate is closed so we were we 
we didn't we were not able to catch the flight we were around 10 15 or 20 people in the same flight who missed the flight and then the lady says oh we cannot make you in go to the plane it's the gate is closed and my 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 daughter started crying because she really wants to to visit Saskatoon and meet her cousins and her grandparents and then we need to to still believe that if it's God's will for us to visit Saskatoon there must be a way so my 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 in-laws my my wife they took they they talked to each other and they said let's book another flight but there's no flight going to Saskatoon anymore from Toronto to Saskatoon so what we did is we we looked to the schedule we saw Winnipeg Edmonton Calgary so what we did is we book a flight to Edmonton 10 in the evening in Toronto arrived 12 30 in the morning this morning in Edmonton called some of the leaders in the church pick us up 12 30 around 1 in the morning in Edmonton drove going to Saskatoon but you know as as I am thinking Lord maybe it's not your will for me going to Saskatoon and then the Spirit of God talked to me the message that you're bringing is unstoppable God in other words no matter how difficult no matter how impossible God will always have a way when you want to obey him and give his word for his namesake and his gospel sake so I started living and meditating on the one who is the promise keeper on the way maker because he is the one who will provide our need he will the one he is the one who prepares the way for sure there is impossible things but when you are living with the way maker when there is no way there will be a way and that's what the bible wants us how we should live for the just shall live by faith the bible says it means it is according to god's word because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of god in other words we should live according to god's word what is the promise of god in your life you might forgot it maybe when you were a young people maybe when you are started in the ministry maybe when you started with your spouse maybe it's in your wedding day maybe when you had that child maybe when you when you are still in a in a faraway land and God gave you a promise and God gave you a vision and far too long because of the circumstances because of the issues because of the negative things you start reacting to the circumstance but Praise be to God. This morning, God says, remember His promise. It might be a big ministry. It might be a beautiful family. It might be touching a community. But God says, He is not bound by your circumstances. He is bound by His word. And His question is, can you once again start believing and obeying Him? Because he is the way maker. He is the way maker.